Well, hello there. Welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. Today we have another bite-sized science-based brain health lecture. That is when I give you everything I got, the most important tidbits on a topic I think is really important that you should know about. And today's topic is sleep and how does it change with age? I'm also gonna give you at the end my thoughts about melatonin. It's a question that I get very often and there's a lot about melatonin that I bet you don't know. So why is this topic important? Well, sleep is the staple, it is the foundation of all health, mental health, physical health, emotional health, and of course, brain health. Sleep does change with age, however. Half of us, by the time we get to 65, are going to have complaints, specifically about our ability to stay asleep. And I wanna help you understand what are some of the consequences of that, and maybe how have we mixed that up with what we think happens in normal aging, and if we could potentially mitigate the problem with melatonin supplementation, how much better off would we be? So this is very concerning that we lose sleep as we get older because we know that sleep and memory have a very, very intimate relationship, and I'm gonna teach you about that today. As we go through sleep, we are essentially going back and forth through five cycles. So we've got stage one, stage two, three, and four. Four. Stage one is just about 5% of sleep. And actually we're semi-conscious in this state. This is where we're in a very light sleep. You're kind of actually not sure, am I sleeping? Am I deeply resting? This is where our muscle activity slows down and occasionally we can have some of those muscle twitches. Stage two, this is the biggest bulk of sleep in the night and goes from about 45 to 55%. So this is when our breathing pattern slows down, our heart rate starts to slow down and our body temperature starts to dip. And it is that subtle little dip in body temperature that typically allows us to go into a deeper sleep. So this is why if you get hot in the room at night, your sleep is going to be a little bit disrupted. Once we get into stage three, now we're actually getting into the super important stages that support brain function and brain health. So this is when deep sleep begins and the brain starts to generate slow, delta waves and some very specific thing happens in delta sleep that I'll tell you about in a moment. Stage four is the beginning of very, very deep sleep. This is when our breathing becomes very rhythmic. Our muscle activity is very limited. This is when we are in full delta wave sleep and our brain stem is starting to get involved at this point and it's preparing us for stage five sleep. And this is rapid eye movement sleep. And the idea when your brain stem is working very well is that this is where the paralysis of sleep is supposed to come in. And the idea is it's a safety mechanism that if we are having a dream where we're running or we're jumping off buildings, it actually forces our body to stay still. Now we know for people who are having difficulty with brainstem function, they can often have something called REM sleep disorder, which is where they have vivid dreams, but they are unable to keep their body still. So oftentimes people will act out their dreams. And that's one of the questions I ask my patients as a neuropsychologist is if you sleep with someone, do they act out their dreams? Because it can be an indication of brainstem involvement. So when we are in REM sleep, this is about 20 to 25% of our sleep, we know that this is when the most important things are happening in terms of memory consolidation, emotional processing, specifically stressful or traumatic things that have happened to us. And for our purposes in the brain health community, it's the most abundant time of brain clearing and I'm going to help you understand exactly what that means. But we have to set the topic of sleep and health within the context of the circadian rhythm because that's really the biological system that supports sleep. This is an approximate 24 hour cycle in the physiological life process of all living things. So animals, including us, have a circadian rhythm, plants, fungi, mold, bacteria, it's absolutely incredible. And it is regulated by two different things. The most internal regulation that happens is related 
to hormones. And the big ones are how we metabolize and absorb melatonin and cortisol. We also have external cues, and the primary one is exposure to sunlight, but temperature and what we eat also matters. So in a very simple sense, as the sun is going down, the job of our biological system, specifically our pineal gland, is to start to produce more melatonin. Our adrenal glands then, in concert, are supposed to be reducing the amount of cortisol that we are producing and absorbing in our body. So we're really supposed to have this very simple upswing of melatonin and a reduction in cortisol. But all of those regulating factors that I just told you about, how much melatonin we're making, how much cortisol we have, what is the temperature, what have we eaten, and specifically our exposure to sunlight, all regulate that. And it was designed over tens and hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. And you know what we haven't had up until very, very recently is a primary light source that looks like this, that mimics the sun that we put about this close to our face, or sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes hours before sleep, and it is screwing up your sleep cycle. So why do we sleep? Well, what we now know is that it's really based on restoration, biological restoration. So muscle growth, tissue repair, protein synthesis, and growth hormone release occur sometimes only during deep sleep. Sleep is a biological necessity, so without it, we would die. The restorative aspects of sleep are very, very unique to the brain. So I was saying before, in deep sleep, we do a lot of cleaning. So we are essentially, the immune system in the brain is essentially clearing out waste products that shouldn't be there. Now these waste products, you can kind of think of it like smoke from a chimney, occur in a perfectly healthy brain, just kind of waste products of living life. But if you have any type of brain health challenge from a hemorrhagic stroke where you have blood in your brain that shouldn't be there, if you have Alzheimer's disease and there's a buildup of amyloid and tau that shouldn't be there, you have more waste products in your brain than in a healthy brain. So you have more of these waste products to clear, and this is why sleep is so essential, because if you're not going through the cycle one through five, spending adequate amounts of time in stages four and specifically stages five of sleep, you are not going to get rid of as many of these waste products, and they build up over time and can interfere with neuronal communication. So incomplete clearing essentially results in inflammation because inflammation is really the byproduct of an immune system that's gotten an alarm bell. It's gotten a signal that says something is going on here that's not quite right. And inflammation is the heart of so many things that go wrong with our body, specifically in aging. So I wanna tell you a little bit about the sleep memory connection and we'll see how I'm doing on those 10 minutes. Uh, we sleep to learn, to remember, and to forget. If we actually remembered every single thing that happened to us during the day, we would be walking around rather unattractive. Our brains would be huge and our skull would have developed to be a lot bigger than it is. During the day, we have a place in our brain where we temporarily store memories, but during the slow wave sleep, so remember we're getting into that during stages two and three, the brain, it's fascinating, is replaying the day's events. It's almost as if it puts a VCR tape, those of you who are old enough to remember uh, VCRs, and it replays what happens during the day and it decides what is important enough to keep. Now, the brain does have some preferences for what to keep. It does prefer to keep things that were stressful or even traumatic because they threaten our basic survival and our well being. So, it is the hippocampus and our prefrontal cortex back and forth all night in deep sleep. They're essentially comparing notes, reviewing threats, and really trying to deduce it down to these basic lessons learned, especially as they relate to threat and to survival. So basically, how can we get a leg up to do it better next time? So how does sleep change as we age? Well, it seems like it's in our mid-50s that we sleep less total time. 
the cycle of our sleep schedule overnight shift. So we fall asleep a little earlier, but the most stressful complaint I hear from my patients is that I'm also waking up earlier and I don't want to wake up earlier. Some people grow to love it and they like the peace and the calm in the morning, but other people just feel like this is not me. I'm much more uh, happy to be sleeping till eight, sometimes even nine but folks are waking up at five, six, and it just doesn't feel like them. We spend a lot more time in light sleep, so stages one and two and three, and less time getting into four and five, the deep slow wave and the REM. We wake up a lot more. Three to four times of wakening in the night is normal for the average 65 to 80 year old. And most of the times that is nature calling. You have to get up to urinate. The key is how easily you fall back asleep. So we have more trouble settling down. So some people think that is related to we accumulate more stressors, we have more responsibilities as we get older, and so sometimes those are the things that get in the hamster wheel. We also find ourselves napping a lot more as we get older, but you have to understand some rules of napping, which I'm gonna do a video on that soon, so that way you're at least understanding the neurobiology of napping so it doesn't take away from your sleep and something we call your sleep consolidation at night. So why all these changes once we get into our 50s? Well, we do have normal aging in the brain areas that control sleep. A lot of times though, medical conditions start to play a role here. So we've got those bladder changes, those are big. We also can have chronic pain, and we know that our circadian rhythm is weakening due to less production of specific growth hormones, especially melatonin. So in my lecture next week, it's all about melatonin, but I wanted to give you this brief little intro. So melatonin is the primary sleep hormone, and it is mostly produced by the pineal gland, which is deep in our brain, but actually almost every cell in the entire body is capable of making melatonin. So it peaks during the darkest time of the day, and it is at its lowest during the brightest part of the day. But remember, we are not in a natural organic rhythm for the most part. We are creating artificial sun exposure environments through devices. Melatonin is produced uh, after the brain. The next primary place is our GI tract and in our bone marrow. Melatonin is not just a sleep hormone. Yes, that is its primary job, but it has a lot of positive benefits beyond just helping you sleep. It is an antioxidant. It is anti-aging, it's a free radical scavenger, and it really regulates the sleep circadian rhythm. The key though, is understanding exactly how it changes and when, when you would consider taking a melatonin supplement, what the very specific milligrams are that science recommends, and I guarantee you don't know this information, and what specific brands is it that I would recommend? And this is a question I've been getting for so long and I have been reluctant to answer it because it has been hard for me to find a company and a set of products that I would feel comfortable endorsing. Well, I myself have been having some sleep issues over the last six to nine months and I have found a supplement that I feel very strongly about, very positive about. So in my next video, which will be all about melatonin, I am going to give you a supplement recommendation, which I have never done, not in the five-year history of I Care For Your Brain. So I hope you tune in and look forward to that. Please let me know how your sleep has changed with age. Please share your experiences and what has worked in the comments, because really in the comments, is where our community thrives. This is where you get to help someone else with your experience so they don't have to start at zero and they cannot reinvent the wheel. You are a part of this community and that means learning and taking in new information, but it also means sharing your expertise because you got it and I wanna know about it and so does everybody watching. So thank you guys so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.